All right, it's so time for business and Sandra Afeno has joined me in the studio and the issue has to do with, with the happenings in the retail market. The, the standoff mm -hmm. between the foreign retailers and mm -hmm. their local counterparts mm -hmm. where the local counterparts are saying, the local traders are saying that you're not supposed to be because operating in our space clear. because the law uh, is against them. But then mm. they're also saying, well, we're coming under the ECOWAS protocol and all of that. I the police intervened and the police is saying or is threatening that we're going to take action against those who take the law into their own hands. But Guta is responding, yeah. and we have that coming right. up in business. Good evening, my name is Sandra Eisen, I'm and I'm here for business. The Ghana police is warning it will arrest Ghanaian traders who shut down shops of foreign retailers in the central business district. This follows a shutdown of some shops belonging to foreigners at the Opera Square in Accra yesterday. The Accra Regional Police Commander in charge of operations, ACP Kwesifori, has described the action as vigilantism. However, the Ghana Union of Traders Association Guta is challenging the police to first arrest foreign retailers before descending on its members. It's been a day after members of the Ghana Electrical Dealers Association shut down shops of foreign retailers. This action, which brought business to a standstill, has seen the police intervene, warning of arrest should such closures continue. Superintendent Kwesio Fori is a Crown Regional Operations Commander. We have also made it clear to them that nobody have the mandate of closing one shop. If for anything, lawful means should be used in doing so. And I will not endorse that kind of vigilante posture. The Ghana Union of Traders Association has reacted to the warning calling on the police to equally arrest the foreign retailers for invading their space. Illegality is illegality, but it shouldn't be one-sided. The foreigners on the other side are taking the laws into their hands by coming to the area where they are not required to be there by law. So two ways. There's illegality. Which one is superior to the other one? We are coming to a point where people are not going to regard laws again. Meanwhile, Guta has agreed to reopen shops of foreign retailers at the Opera Square in Accra on July 23. We understand that uh, both leadership of the Ghana Union of Traders Association and that of the Nigerian Union of Traders Association are currently in talks on the best way forward in the coming months. But I do have here with me one. He's a retailer. His shop was closed down. You've been here today. Yesterday, we had the shutdown of several shops. How has the atmosphere been like today? Has it been calm? No, it's not calm. I quickly rushed from work to come and, and stay in the office so that they will not lock my shop. Unfortunately for me, I was there when they came. Then I told them that, please, I heard that they, they are coming. I'm a Ghanaian. And I took my ID card, gave my ID card to them, gave them my documents. They never look at the document, never listen to me. The two sides have been in dispute for many years, following confusion over whether to apply local laws which forbid for in participation in retail trade or apply ECOWAS treaties that allow citizens of member states to move freely and establish economically in other member states. So, Mark, the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, is undertaking a forensic audit of some 21 investment firms and fund managers in the country. The audit will allow re the re regulator to determine the financial position of these firms as well as the ability to stay in business. Deputy Director at the Commission, Paul P P Abba Bio, actually, told Joy Business SEC will take action against these firms after the audit process. The Securities and Exchange Commission has come under public criticism for lack of effective mechanisms to deal with non-performing investment firms and dealers in the country. A section of the public has also blamed the regulator for many locked up funds of depositors and investors. As part of measures to address these pertinent issues, the regulator has directed that an audit be conducted into the activities of 21 investment firms and fund managers. Deputy Director at the SEC, Paul Abibio, said the process is to assess the financial position of these firms. The one is to assess the, the level of exposure the firms have, the level of risks in those businesses, um, and then coming out of that to we'll have a better understanding of the status of their operations. 
Um, in our regular inspections, we get an appreciation of the, of the state of these firms, but sometimes you need a third party to come in to, to verify, one, where are the assets, um, two, like how we talk about the interconnectedness. Because if you understand the interconnectedness, um, you get a better appreciation of what actions you can take coming out of that. Um, coming out of that will obviously um, take a decision. Some firms may have to be wound up, um, other firms may be recoverable. So that if their portfolio is in good standing and they can recover from where their positions are, um, they have to ask them for a roadmap on how to address the challenges they face. Speaking at a dialogue series in Accra on the investments industry survival after the banking sector reforms, Managing Director of Stanlib, Alex Asidu, urged the Commission to be effective in its work to boost confidence in the sector. 1,000 CDs five, ten years ago was probably worth about $50,000. I mean, exchange rates have moved. 100,000 CDs today is worth less than $20,000. Are you saying that that should be enough capital for an investment firm to manage its funds? I mean, the jury is out there. And so, yes, I think reform is required. But you're right. We need to look at the pace of reform since already, there's already a bit of a death of confidence by the public in the financial services industry. We need to pace it out. But definitely, the SEC has to be seen to, to be acting aggressively. Not aggressively, but seen to be acting quickly to help resolve some of the crisis. I think it will also lend to a bit more confidence in, in, our, in our industry. The Dialogue Series is an annual public forum by Stanley Ghana that brings together leading financial market players to discuss relevant issues to chart a path for growth. Meanwhile, Head of Supervision at the Bank of Ghana, Ose JC, has entreated financial institutions and investors with locked up funds at the Consolidated Bank's report to the Bank of Ghana. According to him, the central bank has instructed CBG to pay funds of all investment firms and other financial institutions. If you place your money with an asset company of a bank, the assets and liabilities of those companies were not transferred to CBG. It's a lot of instances. Management of the central bank directed that CBG should pay all deposits of rural banks and savings and loans and finance houses. So if you are here and you have money with CBG, rural bank, finance house, savings and loans, and you have not been paid, please come to my office. Because that instruction was given. And CBG is expected to comply. And for me, I have seen the numbers, what CBG has paid off so far. And if you still have a deposit with CBG, and you're a finance company, savings and loans, whatever, rural bank, and you've not been paid, come. But please, if you have, if that money is encumbered, if you have used that money to take a facility, don't come. <laughs> yes, because they come to my office and you begin to ask the questions only to realize that the money is encumbered. They've used the money as a collateral to take money. All right, time now to check out news elsewhere on the local scene. And top on the lineup tonight is Majority Leader Oseche Mensa Bunsu kicking against activities of foreign retailers. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has told Canadian investors that Ghana has the best investment environment in Africa for both local and foreign investors. He said Ghana did not only have stable political and security environment, but has banning legal and regulatory environments that offer the best investment climate on the African continent. The Ghana Cocoa Board has dismissed a report suggesting that Ghana fails to secure buyers for its 2020-2021 cocoa beans year. According to the report by Bloomberg, Ghana failed to secure buyers last Wednesday due to the high price of the cocoa beans and the introduction of a surcharge. The majority leader in parliament, Mr. Osei Chaimen Sabunzu, has made a strong case for retailers, calling on government to strictly enforce the legislation that reserves that space for Ghanaians only. According to Graphic Online, he also urged the government to enforce the law that required any foreigner who wanted to do business in Ghana to invest a minimum of $1 million and employ at least 12 Ghanaian citizens.
That's all for business for now with me, Sandra Isenama Penua. After show business, I will be back with more business news after 8 p.m. <music>
depository, I beg your pardon, CSD, has put all this together and is telling us that as of June 2019, 91.8 billion is the total amount of debt in the Ghanaian economy. So government and the private sector has borrowed this amount from the financial markets. Government and the private institutions have borrowed 91.8 billion from the financial markets. And out of this 91.8 billion, 27.7 billion is held by foreign investors. Should we be concerned or not? Let me tell you something. Imagine all these foreign investors coming out of the shores of Ghana, from the Asian part of the world, from Europe, from America, decide to take all their money out of the Ghanaian economy. Do you think we can find 27 billion Ghana cities here and now to give to them to take out? And they'll need to take this money out in foreign currency. They bought it in, in dollars, in euros, and in pounds. And they'll have to take it back to their countries of origin in either euros, dollars, or pounds. And we'll have to look for that equivalent in the Ghanaian market, and that's where the problem is. So when we say we need to reduce the participation of foreign investors, yes, it's a good call. At the same time, we need to be wary not to push them away out of the country, because when they go out, look around you, all, almost all our businesses, there's an element of a foreign investor. You go to shops, you go everywhere, you have foreigners participating in Ghanaian business. And they help with our markets, because in, fin in, in the financial world, our market is still developing, and we need people with weighty funds. And these foreign investors have a lot of money. So when they come and they put it in, they help with the growth of, their, of our economy. But when they're taking it out, therein lies the problem. So government will have to put in place some measures, like restrict the number of debt securities they can hold. So if government feels like, so, so these investors can't buy these number of bonds, then that will be so. Or for example, if, you, if you're a foreign investor and you come and you open a business, you, you should have a Ghanaian participation or a, or a stake, local content. I'm sure you've heard that word many times. So that it reduces the effects of the foreigners repatriating their profits back to their countries. So when we talk about limiting foreign participation, this is exactly what we mean. And by these stark figures, out of 91.8 billion, 27.7 billion is held by foreign investors. 30% of the debt securities are held by foreign investors. What will become of it when the number goes higher and higher? So keep your ears and eyes to the ground as we prepare for the mid-year budget review, which finally has been confirmed to be coming on next week, Monday. And as usual, Joy Business will be bringing you more analysis and insights on that. So for me, on the Breaking It Down desk, I say, bye. All right, so trust me, living on free to always, always make it simple. To the commodity market now, where crude oil actually sold at $63.34 a barrel after gaining eight cents. Gold went for $1,421.51 an ounce. Let's head to the market now for an update. More news on myjoinline.com forward slash business. Have a great evening. Thanks so much for your time. I am Sandra Essenama.